Tim and I have just spent the last hour or so driving to a place outside Adelaide called Victor Harbour. It's where we are now. Beautiful views. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful views across the Flurio Peninsula. It's pretty gorgeous, yeah? Oh, it's a lovely day. It's a magnificent day to get the unmade podcast outside. It's nice. A bit windy. A little bit of wind, which we're a bit worried about on the microphones. But well, you get that in the wilderness. I mean, that's... Yeah. You know, you come out back like this. It's... Bit of trivia about Victor Harbour, Tim. You told us the other day about your parents having their honeymoon at Lakes Entrance yes. in Victoria. Yes. My parents had their honeymoon here at Victor Harbour. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> all out. <That's... laughs> this Lake Entrance isn't looking so bad now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and my mother now lives in Victor Harbour. So later on, we're going to go for a coffee with her, which will be fantastic. So. That will be fantastic. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. So Victor Harbour, for my money, Tim, it's, it's, has two main landmarks. Granite Island, which I might tell you some stories about later on, which is a, a big flat granite island yep. uh, just off the coast, joined to the land by a causeway that an old-fashioned horse-drawn tram takes tourists over to. Nice little day trip. But for me, the real highlight of Victor Harbour is the thing we're standing on now. And technically, its name is Rosetta Head, but everyone, anyone who's anyone, knows it as The Bluff. Yes, the bluff. It's a big headland at the end of the harbour. It sticks out into the sea and there's a big dome, big dome, granite dome structure with greenery all over it. And it's the, it's the highest point in Victor Harbour by quite some measure. And it's really striking the way it goes out into the sea. It's a real, it's the real, uh, you know, signature landmark of the area. I think you're overstating it to say that we're standing on it. This would be barely base camp i think yeah. we're at base camp we're down at the car park the public car park yep. looking up it's looming over us <laughs> like everest it's looming yes and uh so we're gonna go we're gonna go for a wander all over the bluff today that's going to be the site of today's podcast and we'll have a few ideas while we do it and talk a few things tim may even have a secret spoon stashed away in his pocket if we're lucky and there's a very special place hidden on the bluff that we're going to go to afterwards if we can find it and if it still exists and things like that we won't give away too much we're doing this without sherpas today yeah we're carrying our own microphones yes we're carrying all our own gear i have spare batteries uh, in my little gilet here so i'm like the uh i'm the real pack horse of this <laughs> <Yeah>. trip <laughs> you'll be carrying me down too yeah <laughs> So as we look up towards the summit, there's a, there's a small smattering of tourists uh, I can see on the paths and that, but it's fair. we've got most of the thing to ourselves. Do you think we can make it up there to the summit? And where is the exact summit? Oh, that's how, it. Yeah. how will we know when we reach the highest point? It's because from the angle we're on here, it's almost like it's it's there's two humps. It's a bit camel-like, but mm. I th- there's a false summit. Mm. We'll have to see whether which one's the summit, which one's K2. All right. Well, let's start walking up. And as we walk up, I'll tell you about my first idea for a podcast. How's that sound? All right, let's do it, man. Right. Careful there. So, Tim, I'll tell a family story. You know it, so you're just going to have to pretend you're hearing it for the first time. Oh, do but, tell. But, 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 I love this story. But many, many years ago, we, uh, we came to Victor Harbour, as we often did. And my sister... She had a mental blank, I think, for the name of the bluff, the word. And she was referring to it, and she said... Oh, is it is really good. Can we go to the bump? The bump, she called it. <laughs> Which, what a view that is out there. Look at that, Tim. Take a picture of that. Hang on. Now, I'm sure, uh, in fact, I know for a fact, she kind of corrected herself straight away and knew she'd made a mistake. But what older brother was not going to seize on that moment? <laughs> to be fair, it is, it is bump-esque. It is. It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, Sleepy Lizard. Oh, look at this. Oh, Oh, Sleepy Lizard, Sleepy Lizard. I'm trying to get my video. Well, this is incredible Australian wildlife that we're coming across here. Look at that Sleepy Lizard. Slowly, slowly crossing the path and now... A giant crocodile has just come across our path. Go on, Sleepy Lizard. (laughs) I'll put that on the YouTube version of this this podcast. Look at that, Sleepy Lizard. Tread carefully, man. You never know what's going to jump out at us. Sleep, as the name suggests, sleepy lizards are uh, you know, not, not the most formidable foe. But no, do you no. think we need to go up that path to the right to go to the summit, or do you think we keep going this I, way? Uh, well, let's go this way. We'll go the higher way. All right, friends, we're leaving the path. If you don't hear from us, tell the search party that we took the left turn. Yeah. <laughs> 
we should leave a trail of breadcrumbs or something. Or... <laughs> I'm so excited about that sleepy lizard, Tim. <laughs> it was a beautiful lizard, wasn't it? He was just cruising across. So anyway, the bump. So forevermore, this feature, this famous landmark of South Australia, the bluff, in my family is called the bump. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's mainly to, you know, give my sister a hard time. The wonderful thing, of course, is that I told my family that when we first came and have reminded them of it ever since and so it's kind of become the name for our family too. Oh, it's, it's moved. <laughs> it's catching on. It's transferred. Yeah. So, look at that view, Tim. Wow, that's a beautiful beach. Lovely. And look at the coastline sweeping away into the distance. Another photo. Picture of Tim. Looking, looking noble. Stop checking your Are you tweeting? I was about to take a photo of you taking a photo. <laughs> oh, you can do that. And I'll take a selfie of us. Summit behind us. Not long now. Oh, that Mallory and Irvine. They'll just find our bodies here years later. <laughs> so, my idea for a podcast, of course, is what other names, places, things are there in your family or amongst your friendship group that are unique to your friendship group that may have been born of a mispronunciation, a miscommunication, a misunderstanding. I'm sure there are lots. That's a good one. That's the sort of thing gets picked up and used and becomes second nature, doesn't it, really? Yeah. I know many years ago, South Road, which is a main road through the suburbs of the southern part of Adelaide, <laughs> we um, noticed that there were quite a few billboards all the way along advertising the film Braveheart with Mel Gibson. Yeah. So we started to refer to South Road as Braveheart Straight. <laughs> Which I still now sometimes instinctively refer to it as if I'm just <laughs> driving or explaining where to go. Slow down, man. I'm going to, I can't tell my stories. Ooh. Sorry, man. It's a, I want to push on before dark. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, before. How about we set up camp here for the night? Yeah, we could do a little buyback. Yeah, before we do the last 10 metres <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> so, another famous example, I've mentioned before on the show, Edwin Aldrin's sister, when he was a little boy, couldn't say the word brother and always called him Buzzer, and he became known in the family as Buzz. <laughs> wow. To the point where he changed his name to Buzz Aldrin. Second man on the moon. Oh, that's great. He legally changed his name, that's why it's in the uh, Yeah, but he didn't records. legally change his name until after the moonwalk, to be honest. Oh, all right. So when he walked on the moon, he was Edwin Aldrin. So disappointing to get to the summit and find other people here. Yes. Including little kids. Do you feel like the bluff has been commercialised? Too many tourists? <laughs> like Everest. There's a queue of people waiting to get to the summit. Here we are. This reminds me, actually... The last time that we were out in uh, the flora and fauna was on Steepholm, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, look, here's a, here's a plaque, Tim. It says, In commemoration of the meeting near this bluff between HMS investigator Matthew Flinders, who explored the coast of South Australia, and MF led geograph Nicholas Bourdain, April 8th. 1802. So these are the two famous explorers, English and French, who were both, you know, charting the Australian coast. And they had a rendezvous here, which is why this beautiful bay behind you, Tim, is called Encounter Bay. Oh, yeah. Because of the encounter. I didn't know that. That's also why Investigator Strait is called Investigator Strait, because of HMS Investigator, Flinders Ship. Where's Investigator Strait? That's the one between us and Kangaroo Island. I notice here on board the investigator was John Franklin, who famously was one of the uh, two sports teams at school, Light and Franklin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Were you in Light or Franklin? Light. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you were, the, you were the captain of Light. I was the captain of Light. You were our right. sports star. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sorry, I should not. Why are you like? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, I think the highest actual point is on top of that boulder over there. Yeah, so. The second boulder. So do you think uh, we probably need to climb up on that boulder, don't we? <laughs> Looks a bit dangerous, though. So it's unveiled by His Excellency Lord Tennyson. I think that's a different Tennyson to the one that uh, most people... I'm going to do a bit of free solo here, man. Oh, careful, man. 
Oh, hang on. Oh. You're not using ropes. No, no. It's not my style. I'm a solo. Do you want me to yes. stand back and take a photo? I'm up. Hey. Gonna get a picture of me on the summit, man. That's uh, the highest point in Victor Harbour. Before I get blown <laughs> off. Oh, it's windy up here. And down I jump. Oh. She would get in behind this rock so we're out of the wind. Yeah, yeah. So while we're crouching down behind this boulder, you got a spoon on you for spoon of the week. Oh, now? Yeah. All right, well, I've just crouched down. I can't get down in my pocket now. <laughs> I'm going to get up again. Oh. <laughs> right. oh. Tim's standing up again. That noise you may have heard was his knees. All right, here we go. <laughs> Crouching again. There we go. What do you got? Oh, oh it's golden. Yep, yep. Golden it's spoon. Golden. Yeah. It's a beautiful uh, spoon. Yeah. It's uh, gold all the way down. In many ways, quite plain, yeah. but fitting gold, which is, I think, always looks best when it's a bit simple. Yep. Um, there's a lovely uh, little pattern on the back, but otherwise, it's quite plain from the scooping bit all the way up the handle to the. Is it the head? Is that what it's called? Or the bluff? The bluff of the, the, bluff the spoon. Of the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> new, new nomenclature. The opposite end to the scoopy bit is the bluff. <laughs> is the bluff. Yeah. That's right. And uh, this is a spoon from Lock Sport. Lock Sport, which is a small, very much like Victor Harbour, tourist, yeah. or even smaller than a tourist town in Gippsland near Terrelgan, where I grew up. And we used to go to Lock Sport uh, on holidays to see friends, a bit like you might have come down to Victor Harbour. Yeah. Small little town that just uh, it exists pretty much for a bit of tourist work in uh, the summer. A couple of things to say about Locksport. The first one was this. We used to go down there because uh, friends had a holiday house down there. Yep. Um, but it was just shocking because of the mosquitoes. There were mosquitoes like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. And um, I actually came to resent going <laughs> to so, Locksport. So it's Lock as in Loch Ness, Lock as in Lake. So it was a lake, yeah. was it? Yeah. Lock sport and sport as in sport that you play. It's kind of part of the lakes. It's it's about 50 k's from Lakes Entrance, which we had last time. So it's yeah. sort of part of those lakes. Yeah. But it's very small. Only has about 800 people that live there. Now the actual spoon itself, people will be interested in, yeah. is green with a yellow. Well, oh, no, the, the, the spoon's gold, but the enamel, oh, the enameled bluff, yeah, yeah, is yeah, yeah. is green enamel with a yeah a yellow kangaroo and lock sport with a red background. Very simple. Very simple. Very yeah. Australian sort of looking. In some ways, it looks like a uh, like a cricket bat handle or you know what I mean like a simple design when you first pulled it out I thought it was going to be like something to do with the Olympics or that yellow kangaroo was made really famous in 1983 when Australia won the America's Cup yes. and that yellow kangaroo on a green background became kind of a real emblem of Australian sport yeah yeah so looking at that now it looks kind of sport 1980s sport kind of a yeah the cool thing though is I looked up lock sport right yeah. just to say well what was I remember going as a kid haven't been for a long time a lot of mosquitoes. Everyone who has a, a um, beach house down there um, has a veranda that they sit under, a porch, but they, it's all covered by mesh and wire so you don't get attacked by the mosquitoes. Right. It's a real mosquito Which, problem. Oh, and it's just like, wh why do we come here? We always go home <laughs> absolutely covered in mosquito bites. But anyway, I looked up Lock Sport. The first thing that came up on Google was the question. You know, Google has its questions and it mm. is, is Lock Sport a good place to live? And I nearly didn't click on it because I thought, well, of course, it was beautiful beach sort of place. Yeah. And the answer comes up, no. <laughs> it says, and I'm reading literally from Google, not a good place to live. There are lots of backstabbing and small town syndrome stuff. <laughs> this has been written by someone really snarky, hasn't it? Lack of facilities and a long drive to Sale, which is a town nearby, to do shopping. The town has nothing really, no light life, socially isolated. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what Google thinks of Lock Sport. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that's incredibly that's nasty. frank and honest, isn't it? Nothing really. Nice spoon. Lock Sport, not a good place to live. No. Decent spoon. It's amazing they have a spoon, isn't it, really? Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what is the threshold for a spoon? If you're going to get... There's lots of backstabbing. I wonder if you get backstabbed with a spoon. How bad? How painful would that be? That would be bad. Yeah. So, Tim, we also have a winner of a unmade podcast spoon for when they're finally made. We're doing a random draw. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, we've... We've carried our huge random chocolate wheel all the way to the top of the oh, bluff. No wonder I'm... So we'll start spinning it and tell you who the winner is. Here we go. Spin! The winner is... Gleb. Gleb? 
from, from California. That's all I know. Gleb. That's the only name I've got. California's kind of the lock sport of America, isn't <laughs> Is it? Is California a good place to live? I would say probably yes. Parts of Oh, yeah. Well, probably Maybe not so much at the moment with all the vires, but... It's a bit bigger than lock sport, I think. Yeah. So, well done, Gleb. You, too, will be sent a spoon, an unmade podcast spoon, when they're made. It's windy up here. So, another story about my sister's very early days of struggling with words you know she's only a little girl gee she's a well of stories she's, well, she's a well of stories we used to have lots and lots of video cassettes in our house of things we'd taped off the tv star wars superman bmx bandits planes trains and automobiles all the films you loved as a kid yep so she decided to go through all the videotapes they would have a section of masking tape along the side with the name of the film written on it and she decided to go through and designate which ones shouldn't be recorded over, which yes. ones shouldn't be wiped. So she picked all her favourites and wrote on the side of them, do not whip, <laughs> W-H-I-P, do not whip. <laughs> and so we had all these video cassettes with do not whip written on them. And true to my idea I was saying earlier, things that get renamed because of like funny mistakes. Yes. For years afterwards, we would always jokingly say if there was a tape or something we wanted to make sure it wasn't erased, we would say, make sure you don't whip that one. <laughs> do not whip that one. And I have to say, you know, <laughs> that is a classic. Yeah. And, and, and uh, they never were whipped. They weren't. They were, they were not. Were, they were neither whipped nor wiped. Oh, they, they, they were. They were kept intact. <laughs> Let me take another picture up here for the for the video and for the podcast, so people can see what you're looking out here. Actually, towards the ocean, we're really at we're at the southern. This is South Australia, the southern part of Australia. Oh, yeah. The only thing you're going to get further out that way is Antarctica. Yeah, that's next stop. Next stop. Next stop, Antarctica. Big blue. Big ocean blue, big blue sea you're right should we go to this secret place now now this is a very special place really which also has its own legendary name down there isn't it uh i'm gonna have to blindfold you from this point man <laughs> <laughs> it's so secret <laughs> all right what are you doing what are you walk you walk yourself well i'm into parkour you see i'm diving and jumping and <laughs> somersaulting <laughs> and <laughs> clampering over boulders Boulders? Uh, park, just how do you spell parkour so I know what to put on the form when the ambulance comes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so we're heading off to kind of like, we're going downhill from the summit now, out towards the sea. And there's another little jut of land that comes off this headland. That's what we're heading towards. Hey, hey, how are you? G'day there. You been down there? What did you see? Just a lizard. You saw a lizard? Oh. We saw a lizard over that way. It What's that for? That's for recording voices. We're making a recording of our trip. And you've got some binoculars there. They look like pretty good binoculars. What can you see with the binoculars? I saw a danger sign down there and people. Yeah. Have you been to the summit yet, to the very top? No, but I just got scared. As soon as I saw the lizard, it was right there and we just jumped. You were scared of it? I but was know. it a sleepy lizard? No, it was awake. No, no, no. But was it like, was it, what did it look like? Was it? It had the red colour on it. It was black with yellow. spots of yellow. Oh, was it big and thick? Like a log? Or was it small and thin? Um, kind of in between. Okay, I probably wasn't a sleepy lizard then. No, best best to be careful, step back. All right, well have fun, but lizards are okay. Lizards can't hurt you, so you'll be right. Are you gonna go to the top? Enjoy, yeah. All right, go to the- Go down the other way, or? Yeah, you can go, to, it is a bit more steep to go down that way oh, than around. Yeah. But you can just go up to the summit and then come back, but yeah. You go to the top and there's a plaque there about Matthew Flinders and you can see off to Victor Harbour. It's really great, yeah. All right. Have a nice day. Always good to mingle with the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going. It's behind those big rocks up there. Yeah. yeah. I hope I haven't sent that old lady to her doom. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we're heading down to this lower, lower part. I, I shouldn't be telling these secrets, should I? No, no. Forget like... that. Make a note to erase that, Brady. Yep. <laughs> no pictures of this part as well. <laughs> I wonder if even humans have been over this part before. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that kid and his yeah. grandma. <laughs> and whoever, whoever, whoever put that bench there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if this wind is as strong as I fear it is in the microphones, this is going to be like a, a Patreon only <laughs> uh, experience. <laughs> oh look, sleepy lizard again. Another, wait, stop, 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 stop. Wait, let's, wait. let's stop, stop. See if we can get... See if I can get a video before he gets away. 
Wow, this place is infested with sleepy lizards. We've seen two, heard reports of a third. Well, sleepy lizards like to sunbake. So um, they go out on the path and sunbake until humans come by and then, they, and then they, they slowly move into the... So he would have just been sunbaking and then we ruined his sleep. That's two sleepy lizards. That's a podcast of sleepy lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've got to stop and do it my shoelace, ma'am. Oh. All right. Careful. One false step around here. Whoa. You'd fall over on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what any of these other little islands are called? I don't know what those little ones are called, no. They look cute, don't they? So this used to be a big whaling spot back in the days. Oh, yeah. The bluff itself, I believe, had a whaling station on it. There are signs out today about whales. We should keep our eyes out. Yeah. This is a whale spotting area. It is. come to Victor Harbour to see whales. Let me tell you an amazing story then. No, this is neither the time nor... The... Oh, hang on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned Granite Island, which we can just see, see now. It's a big, big flat island, much bigger than the bluff. So years and years ago, Tim, I went to an Aussie Rules football game in Melbourne at the MCG. Yes. With some mates. And... Sitting behind us were, I think, a couple of girls. We got chatting to them. And they were tourists wanting to see what Aussie Rules football was, so we explained how the game worked to them. And they were Dutch. And one of the girls who was Dutch... Your dad was Dutch, wasn't he? I believe he was, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> she, her next stop was Adelaide, so I said, well, if you come to Adelaide, look me up and I'll show you the sights, you know, and be a good tour guide. Yep. So when she got to Adelaide, she called me and said, oh, you know, do you want to do something today? It was really bad weather, but I'd heard there were whales down here at Victor Harbour. So I said, oh, why don't I take you to Victor Harbour? We drove down here. The weather was awful. Grey skies, rain. There was no one here. You could see a couple of whales. And, and I said, I'll show you Granite Island. We walked across the causeway to Granite Island in terrible rain. There was no one on Granite Island. It was absolutely deserted. And I said, well, let's walk around to the back of Granite Island, which hardly anyone does, because it's a bit of an extra walk and it's yeah. hard work. But maybe we'll see... You know, we were both young and fit, and maybe we'll see some whales and that. So we walked all the way around to the back of Granite Island. Howling, howling wind, terrible rain coming straight from Antarctica. We were cowling from the wind. And then the first humans we'd seen on Granite Island coming from a distance started walking towards us. This figure came walking towards us from a distance the other way along the path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what other crazy person would be out on Granite Island at this time? They got closer and closer and closer. When they got closer and made eye contact with us, it turns out... It was some woman who was on holiday from Holland who this girl I was with knew and lived in the oh, same street. Kidding. And she was like, I can't believe it. It's Gladys from Rotterdam. They had, like this, they had this big reunion, like at the southernmost point you could be in the middle of nowhere in this terrible weather. Like, oh, it was incredible. incredible side of the world. Incredible coincidence. Like you could not have picked a more remote, less likely place to bump into someone you know. All right, we're, we're, we're amongst this rocky outcrop now. Right yeah, well, down. I can feel it. We're getting closer. Lower on the bluff. Where closer. is this place? Is it down that way or is it down that oh, way? It's in the more precariously located areas. You need to be careful. I think I can see it. Is that oh, it? Oh, is that it there? That's it there. Is that it? I think so, yeah, yeah. Well, that looks dangerous. I know. What were we doing down there? All right, let's see if we can get back there all these years later. All right. We are doing it one-handed now. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're holding our microphone. They totally need to make a Netflix documentary about this trip. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Two jerks on a bluff. That's a <laughs> wow. It's more spectacular than I remember, Tim. What can you tell me about the geology around here, man? I tell you what, if you want to make a good podcast about mispronunciations, before we got here, Tim called up uh, the bluff on Wikipedia and started reading the science history of the bluff to me. Yeah. Some of those, uh, some of those words you were pulling out, man. I'm not, think... not hundred percent sure. You started mispronouncing words you knew how to pronounce. <laughs> At one, you were you said granite instead of granite. I th <laughs> well, you'd think Wikipedia would have better spelling. <laughs> it is mostly granite, obviously. Is that really? Is that it? I think it is. Did we really go out there? Yeah. That looks dangerous. We're gonna get a. We're gonna need to get a chopper to drop us off. Can out we there, get there? We're gonna have to put our microphones in our pockets. I'm actually beginning to wonder if we can do that. We're not, we're not the sprightly young lads we once were. Ugh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, come on, I've crouched down and got up again a couple of times already today. I feel like I'm in form. Yeah, we can do it. We will have to put our phone... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking pictures to send them to the media so that... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the guy, in case he's unrecognised. Yeah, we can get there. You don't think all that red moss is slippery? It won't be slippery. No, it won't be slippery. It's just sort of that rusty stuff. Well, all right, let's start. But let's... I think we better. I think we better put the. Uh... You're joking, aren't you? We've got to record it. it. Didn't happen if you don't record it. <laughs> See, even though it means we've got one less hand, so something you think we're not sure we can do, you now say we have to do one-handed. No, you're right. Maybe we should. Well, let's just see what the way well, down is first. Maybe there's a there's another way around that side or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm going to go and see if there's a path down this way. Yeah, it's easier down this way, man. All right. We, 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 we don't Brady's have to, like, staircase. we won't have to abseil <laughs> down boulders this way. Some lovely flowers around here. We're out of the wind too, which is nice. Some real, right. real rock clambering going on, going on now. This recording is ever found. Do you reckon down that way? I reckon. Oh, look, there's a path down that way. Oh, there's a path. Oh. <laughs> We're risking our lives about four metres away from a path. <laughs> oh, look, there's a tourist train. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This looks a bit safer down this Ski way. Ski lift. It's like <laughs> I'll cut this part out about the path, Jim, and pretend we abseiled down those rocks. <laughs> That's right. There's still going to have to be a bit of rock clambering at the end. There is an incredibly helpful and smooth path. Yeah, the path ends here though, man. What do you reckon? Down, we've, got to get, we've got to somehow get down. I reckon I'm going to slide down this rock. Do you? Yeah. Keep yourself low. Low centre of gravity, because this stuff could be slippery. I think I'm going to roll down. Oh. This is where my new Adidas Ultra Boost 20s are coming in handy. Do you remember several episodes ago I complained that Adidas hadn't brought something out for the... Uh, cool middle-aged man yeah well they've delivered these right. are awesome let's have a look yeah they're, they're not bad they're not, what do you mean not bad well get low man <laughs> get low <laughs> keep low keep low keep low can i have your shoes if you die <laughs> all right keep low all right this is this bit's going to be risky oh can you do this man <laughs> don't do anything you're not comfortable with yes i can do it Alright, I'm not sure I can do it. This is where my parkour training comes in handy. Alright, here we go. Oh. Yes. Proper free solo. Nice work. We're close now. Yep. Ow. You good? Yep. Yes, yes. Listen people, can you hit? If, we, we if I'm quiet for a second, you'll hear the sea below us churning, calling for our death. The sea was angry that day, my friends. <laughs> and now... We're coming to the entrance to this magical place where you kind of have to get down on your butt to shimmy in. Oh. You're getting a photo, man. You gotta get a photo of this historic moment. I'm in. Can you, I'm in. Can't you just get in down the front? I'm in. Well, I wouldn't risk it if I were you, man. Would have been easier to sail around and yeah, climb you can go up around the, the front. Cliff. You can go around the front if you're a lightweight. Lightweight? <laughs> I went in the original entrance, like the Howard Carter entrance. Here he comes. Tim's using the special entrance. <laughs> so people, this is called, officially, this is Tim and Brady Cave. Tim and Brady Cave. Yep. Yep. So what were, I, I can't fully remember the story of Tim and Brady Cave. Like we, we, we obviously found our way down here because it looked cool and we shimmied down. Yeah. It was much harder back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the rocks have, have, have worn away over time. Yeah, they've I eroded. Think, the ocean. So it's this kind of, it's kind of like an, a rock that's a huge boulder that's hollowed out and you can sit inside it and there's views of the sea and it's very spectacular. There's still that little ring there. Yeah. That we always jumped, dreamed about jumping, jumping out, out and catching. Grab. Yeah. Which grabbing. Would be suicide. Yeah. Crazy madness. I'm still tempted by it. I'm taking pictures of these things. There's, there's the ring you can jump out and catch. Um, Please, people, don't. Don't jump out and try and catch you. <laughs> Did we come here many times? I don't remember coming here that many times. I remember coming a lot in those days with different groups of people. But you and I, I think, have just come a few times. I'm not different. Saying... <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, then I'm going to make a confession. If you, if, if you came here with other people, I'm going to admit I came here with a girlfriend. <gasps> really? Yeah. You've shown her the cave. Well, mm. now that you've said you came here with other friends, I don't feel so guilty. Like, as a tourist operator, then it's just... <laughs> Oh, so was I. <laughs> Looking at the rock formations. <laughs> so another interesting point of trivia is such is the legendariness of Tim and Brady Cave. Yeah. That the Dropbox that Tim and I share to make the unmade podcast is called Tim and Brady Cave. We, <laughs> That's where we put all our shared files and things when we're making the podcast. That was great. When we were first setting it up and you said, I'll, I'll create a, a Dropbox folder for us to use. Yeah. And it popped up Tim and Brady Cave. Yeah. I thought, oh, that's fantastic. 
Yeah. So here we are again, after all these years. Yeah, no one really has really done much with the place, have they? No, well, no, not many people can get here. How many days do you reckon we could live in Tim and Brady Cave? I reckon, we'd prob I reckon 20 minutes. 20 minutes, <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's difficult if you had a three-piece feed or something, you could sit here. Oh, you could yeah. really enjoy it. That's what yeah. you need. Someone to to um It's only half an hour back to that KFC, I reckon. Yeah, but then you gotta come back. Yeah, it'd be hard holding a microphone and KFC and getting down those rocks. That's true. Let me do a quick Storyblocks sponsorship. It is this desecrating the cave to do Storyblocks in here? Because I forgot Honoring the cave. Honoring the cave. Honoring the, Honoring the, the cave. <laughs> Story Blocks, who have been a great sponsor for us at the moment. Now, Tim, this is a beautiful site we're looking at right now. Oh, yeah. I've travelled all the way around the world to see it. Yeah. I, I can't get all my camera equipment down here. I wouldn't be able to film this if I wanted to. But magnificent sites like the one we're looking at now are at your fingertips for use in your films, your clips, your YouTube videos, your brochures, your websites, anything you're doing. Story Blocks. Other people have done the hard work for you. They've got this incredible library of stock footage. You can use all of it for just a monthly subscription. Go to storyblocks.com slash unmade. Storyblocks.com slash unmade. And the sort of sites we're looking at now that we can't, we can't film are the sort of things that you can have in an instant. Whatever you're after, they're going to have it. By the way, Tim, mm. people have been going in through the Storybooks library and... Uh, getting their Tim lookalikes. Have they? Have you seen any of them yet? No, I haven't. Uh, no. we'll, we'll save them for the, for a future episode. But another little thing we've got going on the side, go to storyblocks.com slash unmade. Even if you're not a subscriber, by the way, to the whole library, you can look through it and browse it. So s subscribers and non-subscribers alike have been going there and we want to see you find stock video or pictures of people you think look like Tim. If you know what Tim <laughs> looks like, make it a lookalike. If you don't know what he looks like, just show us what you think he might look like. We've been having all sorts of fascinating submissions already. Did you say people and or objects that look like... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what object do you think you look most like if you look like an object? Uh, I think from a distance I look a bit like Tim and Brady Kay from the... <laughs> <laughs> Big round bubble yeah. head. Yeah. So, do you want to have a podcast idea while we're here? The lesson that you gave me in the last podcast was to was to take a name and then develop it from there. I that's very good advice, which I'm going to ignore on this occasion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I do have a bad title for this particular podcast. I'm sure. <laughs> yep. Which is which is called Alley Talk. Alley Talk. Alley Talk. Yes. This it, it's a podcast about ten pin bowling. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 A couple of days ago, I went with my girls and a friend, Ten Pin Bowling. And um, oh, I haven't, look, I haven't done that for a long, long time, many, many years. But you realise a Ten Pin Bowling alley is like a universe in itself. Yeah. It's its own world. It's got its own shoes. It's got its own language. Yeah. It's got its own, you know, rules. And it's something that you never, ever give a moment or a second's thought to until you're in there. And then suddenly the pressure is on to know... Yeah. You know, to have skills and abilities and lingo and style. And suddenly, there's something about being in a bowling alley that makes you start to pontificate about good ways to do it and right. how to spin the ball. Yeah, yeah. And how to bowl it down and like so forth. Like when you're watching um, diving or gymnastics at the Olympics and within seconds, you're commenting on their technique and how straight their arms and legs are. Yeah. And like, like, <laughs> like, oh, that's oh, terrible. Yeah. Like, completely lost Big form. splash, small splash. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, ten pin okay. bowling is very much the same. We yeah. were blessed on this occasion with having someone in um, the the alley next to us. Hmm. Is, is the whole thing called an alley or oh, the lane? It's a lane, lane isn't it? Yeah, yeah, lane. The lane next to us, who can who, who had a bit of a strut about them, right. and um, was was uh, bowling alone, and um, liked to think they knew what was going on. So there was yeah. one occasion when I. Um, would uh, I went to sort of you know you share a little area where the balls come up and hop you know up out of the ground yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was picking it up and the lady said oh is that a is that a nine is that my nine and I and I, I, I said what she says is that is that my nine I think this this seven's yours that's my nine yeah and I wasn't sure what she was doing, but obviously she knew and I said well my fingers fit if your fingers fit it's the weight isn't it the weight and, is uh, that's it it's fine yeah. why can't I just bowl this one we brought our bowls over and so forth yeah. she goes 
no, that's a nine, that's mine. So I had to sort of take it back and put it back. Right. For the life of me, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. As long as, because if your fingers fit, in my world, that's the it's criteria. your bowl, <laughs> bowl yeah. to bowl. You don't care about the Bowl to bowl. Yeah. Yeah. So a podcast that explores the, the strange yeah. world of 10-pin bowling. Are you a good bowler? I, well, see, here's the thing. You, you think this is not terribly difficult, so surely everyone's a pretty good bowler or... Hmm. I, I don't know, but I don't think I am a very good bowler. No. But every single time I walk up to bowl, I think I'm, I'm a pretty good bowler, like, yeah. like I know what to do. Years of youth group practice and so forth, and, um, and you can get it down the other end, but... I don't, yeah, know. I don't know if you knew this, but I didn't... I mean, I've known this a long time now, but I didn't know it until I was an adult. That the, the lane is only oiled, oily, for about three quarters of the way down, and the last quarter has no oil. Why is that? And, well, that's why when you, when you see someone who's good at bowling and they spin it, it seems to be spinning on the spot. Like, it seems to not be moving, but spinning, in a, and, but moving in a straight line. Yeah. And then right at the end, it hooks, and it hooks into the pins... That's because for the first three quarters, it's it's on the oil and it can't grip, so it's just spinning helplessly as it rolls down. Yeah. And then when it finally hits the unoiled section at the end, the ball bites into the wood and spins and hooks, and that's why it hooks into the pins at the end and oh. gives you that good angle into the pins. Well, that's it, because apparently hitting it straight on doesn't knock them all down. It's not it? as good as you want to come in an angle, and the fact that it's only oiled part way. That's also why left handed bowlers have quite an advantage, because over the course of hours or a day, the oil that's laid down overnight is like very perfectly laid down. Mm. But all the right handers rolling down the right hand side of the lane muck up the oil a bit and it becomes not as nice to bowl on yep but left-handers who bowl down the other side of the lane and hook in from the other side their oil doesn't get disrupted as much over the course uh, of a day right. so yeah. left-handed bowlers have this advantage of the oil in the lane doesn't get ruined as badly yep. and there are also different ways you can lay down the oil and different patterns and it's a whole it's a whole art form the oil of the 10 pin bowling lanes good for your podcast oh well the, indeed <laughs> i i remember watching 10 pin bowling on television and it's, it was a Saturday afternoon sport, you know. It was always the lunch break in the cricket. It was for a while, yeah, yeah. 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 It swapped with that and yachting. Yeah. The two most boring things on television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheapest to buy, yeah. That's right. But it was they, these guys, they were either getting strikes or just missing one and getting it the next time. Spare, so getting a yeah. spare. Yeah. So it's uh, time and time again. But they um, must have spent an enormous amount of time 10-pin bowling. Yeah, you get pretty good at it. I remember one of the presidents had a 10-pin bowling alley installed mm. in the White mm-hmm, House, mm-hmm. which... Um, what did you score? What was your score when you went bowling? My score was pretty poor. I tried a few left-handers. Oh, remember, okay. I was with a little party of friends, so I was no. not unleashing the full yeah. capacity of <laughs> Ryan's right. bowling arm. Which 30. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise... <laughs> I, I uh, oh, yeah, no, look, I got a, I can't remember, my my two daughters got a draw, which mm-hmm. was imminently frustrating, right. anticlimactic, after the after the trash talking that was going on in the car on the right. way, um, and uh, I got a bit less than that, I can't right. remember. <laughs> right. Did you get any strikes, though? Yes, that's, I got one strike. All that matters, the moment yep. you get the strike. That's right. It doesn't matter how good at a sport you are, as long as you have that magic moment. That's right. I once went and played golf, have I told the story? I once went and played golf with some mates of mine who are good golfers and I'm not a particularly good golfer and we were going to a bit of a professional course and the first hole had this really scenic outlook from this hilltop down the first fairway and the clubhouse was right behind it and all the people who were playing later that day who had just finished would be there having something to eat or drink so they would all watch the first tee shot so it was the, it was the, it was the pressure shot and my mate who was a particularly good golfer absolutely hooked his tee shot off into the trees it was a terrible terrible shot where people were like laughing behind and then i came up and i hit it straight as a die beautiful straight into the air straight down the fairway best golf shot of my life people got up and applauded oh shot mate <laughs> shot and i sort of just turned and gave like this knowing nod thank you very yep. much thank yep. you beautiful shot everyone was like that guy that guy knows what he's doing that day, I think I shot 130. <laughs> Probably the worst round of my life. The guy who hooked the first, I think, shot 85. Had a mag- had a really good day. Oh, no, no, he shot. No, he broke. I think he shot about 80. He had an amazing day, but all that mattered was that he got laughed at with his rubbish first shot, That's and right. I got applauded. And I didn't care what happened after that. <laughs> that first tee off is high pressure, and it's Ooh. the first thing you do. And there's yep. always other people, other teams waiting. Yep. Yep. Man, I used to play golf with a couple of cousins 
20 years ago in Melbourne and we'd tee off on a Saturday morning and so the whole Saturday morning crowd was there mm. and the pressure was enormous and we none of us were really yeah. any good. It's the only shot you wanted to hit well. Oh my goodness, it was so painful and I mean just to hit the ball was, I mean the, the pressure yeah. was on just to connect. <laughs> Not miss, then, yeah. I remember, I remember um, uh, one of my cousins skying the ball like up and then over, sort of out of sight, back over towards the boom and the unmistakable sound of a car roof. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. nowhere to hide. No. There's nowhere to hide. No. There's always that moment as well where you where you do a swing and maybe a miss, and you're like, oh, and you just you got to pretend that it was a practice <laughs> shot. So you sort of just There's step no back pretending. and go, oh. Yeah, no, okay, now seriously, now, now. <laughs> There's no pretending. Again. Everyone knows Everyone when knows. you miss. Everyone knows. This is bloody gorgeous. Beautiful. This is amazing. I like that we put the front window out here. This is a good yeah. view. This is a beautiful spot, incredible view. We've got it completely to ourselves. Where else in the world can you have places like this just to yourself for, for an hour or two? I don't know. An hour or two? I'm hungry. We're not staying no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have let you see that KFC in Victor Harbour. <laughs> an hour or two. I know you all think Tim's a funny guy, but I think he was genuinely upset then when he thought he wasn't going to get to eat. <laughs> it wasn't Steep Home. That was 12 hours, wasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> you were bored within 20 minutes on Steep Home. Well, no, and yeah. I, saw, were... I saw the battery and stuff. That was yeah, cool. Yeah. I'll take a couple more pictures and we'll go and you get you some food. Unload there. It's nice. Ugh. Where are you going? I'm just going up here to have a look. There we go. Look a bit more out to that way, so I've got a bit more of your glasses. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're going, we're going back. Here we go. Careful there. You know, you know, it's often that's when that's when climbers die on the you know the way back. That's right. <laughs> so you know you get old when you every five minutes saying to whoever you're with, careful, watch your step. <laughs> yeah. A bit of bit of bit of bit of bump there in the horizon on the background. Bit of Tim in the foreground. Bit of bump. Bit of sun. Bit of flare. That's the photo. That's the one they'll remember you for. <laughs> Here's my back. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now about 20 meters ahead of Brady, jumping, flipping. Oh. Let me get, let me right. concentrate on oh. climbing here for a minute. Oh, this is a bit free solo, this one. Here, look up, look up a bit, man. <laughs> you lost interest in that photo before you finished taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard Ken Duncan can wait nine hours for a <laughs> perfect moment. <laughs> you were literally putting the camera back in your pocket before you pressed the button. I, <laughs> I like to get it away before the, I can hear the click. You know, it's like the speed of sound is slower than the speed of light. Yeah. Okay, I've got myself into this position. <laughs> Hang on. I'll take a photo. <laughs> so Tim got himself into this position and now he can't get out of it. <laughs> that This picture makes you look amazing if you didn't know that you're stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not going to die there, but no. you do have to move eventually. <laughs> okay. I reckon it might be quicker to climb it here. Oh, no, might be quicker to use the track again. I oh, know. Whoa. That's yep. amazing. I don't know. I didn't know the human body could form that position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just overtaking you here up the walking path. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just going to put the microphone down for a moment. <laughs> uh, hang on, do you want me to come and... Can I help you in any way? No, no. No, good, because I don't want to. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. Oh. Oh, we're on opposite sides. Oh, no, here we go. Oh, God. Oh. oh, dear. Tim nearly died then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to bet on how many sleepy lizards we see on the way back? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. What are your? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go zero. I'm gonna be a pessimist. Zero. I reckon we'll see one more. All right. Oh, we feel like we're further away than ever. That's tough. Up that way. How long before a civilian goes to Tim and Brady Cave? Do you reckon? <laughs> Get a photo there. Yeah. Hope they're careful. <laughs> so the question is. Do we call this episode Tim and Brady Cave or The Bump? <laughs> It'll give away the secret. The secret beforehand. And and I won't get as much pleasure as well. 
to be my sister a hard time. <laughs> Let's call it the bump. That gives yeah. it its legend. Yeah. <laughs> You won't have to go to story blocks to get extra audio on heavy breathing, man, that's for no. sure. <laughs> Back in the proper wind now. Oh, my hat just blew off. I'm sure that was gone, but I'm sure that was going out to sea, but it got hit by a boulder. Tim, Tim doesn't know I've come back to get my hat. <laughs> Lost your hat? Yep. I thought it had gone out to sea, but it hit the boulder. Despite the wind, it's like the bluest sky. Yeah. It's beautiful. Not easy holding a microphone doing this. No, no, it's not. I don't know David Attenborough does it. Yeah. Do you think the Attenborough people are going to get onto Tim and Brady Cave now? Oh, yes. That would be probably his last big legacy yeah. trip, you know, <laughs> before he retires. The climax of everything is achieved. Oh, sleepy, sleepy, sleepy lizard. Hey! Sleepy lizard, we My got one more. buddy, yes, comes out. We got one more. He, he went back and hid too quickly though, so I didn't get a picture of him. He's in the hole. He's gone in Verified. his hole. I won the bet. Oh, another sleepy. <gasps> Let's stay oh. still, because that one's not going anywhere. See if I can get a picture of him. Those kids walk straight past. They no, they were playing with it. They were playing oh. with it. Sleepy, sleepy. Sleepy no. lizard. It's okay, Sleepy. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. Capturing... There you go, Sleepy Lizard. Where are you going? Where are you he going? He doesn't know where to go. He's lost his hole. No, he's a bit stuck, isn't bit he? too sleepy. Sorry, Sleepy. Yeah. We'll let you go. Let you go. Alright. We'll let you go. Carry on, son. As you were. So two Sleepies on the walk back. Oh, gosh. No one won the bit. Yeah. How high do you think the bump is? What was the summit there? Oh, jeez, I read it just before on Wikipedia, but I yeah. glazed over it. It's windier down here at the car park than it was at... Yeah, because up there we're up above the wind, man. That's how it works. Oh, we're, we're, we're technically in space up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's particularly lovely to see the vista of South Australia yeah. green. Oh, I think after brown. all these years, man, it was really special to go back with you to Tim Brady Cave and talk about 10 pin bowling and story blocks. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's not something we've done before. No. Not on those particular topics. Uh, okay. And here we are back. Signing out. Back so at the car. Safely home, over and out. Yeah, go for a go, go and have a coffee with my mum. Let's do it. All right.